family, this is We Geek Together. Welcome to our podcast. I am Andy, and this is Everett. That's me. And we're... Today is a much more chill episode. We're talking about Tales from the Tavern, all the fun, goofy, silly things that have happened to us over the year. But before we get to that, let's get to the opening drinks. Uh, the first round of drinks, yep. that's what it's called. What is new with you, Everett? Well, as you can see, I'm, I'm repping a classic Arrowhead here today. Um, I started a diet. Um, I don't recommend it. He's he's doing yeah. the all. I'm doing carnivore diet. Carnivore diet. Carnivore diet. I'm basically sticking to eggs, bacon, beef, and butter. Sometimes chicken, but besides that, eggs, bacon, beef, butter. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's you tough. should not see my bathroom. Hey, but <laughs> uh, you, you're you losing weight, though. Yeah, I'm you're down 25 good. pounds. 20, 20. 25 pounds. Shoot. My biggest, I was at 330 pounds, and I'm at 304 Dude. Um, as of yesterday. So, Congrats, man. Yeah. Keep it up. Um, yeah. Keep it's it been up. worth it you're, so far. You're looking better. Yeah, thank you. Um, How about you? What, what you got going I on? I have been playing this game called uh, The Finals. It's a first-person shooter game. The finals. I have not yeah, heard of that. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's just like a team-based uh, shooter game. It's free to play, um, because I was playing Apex and I suck at Apex. It <laughs> it's so sweaty. That, uh, that's my problem with like any online uh, shooters. I'm gonna suck at it at first. I'm gonna get destroyed, and then I have I lose all motivation to continue to try and play. The finals is in a much more friendlier place for beginners. I say like, there's definitely some builds that you don't die in half a second, and then like I have a chance to like fight a bit, and yeah. then that gives me chances to improve on. Versus Apex, I feel like I die in half a second, and then it's like, well, I'm never. I spent okay. ten minutes. I meant I spent ten minutes playing, and then I shot for two seconds, and then I died. Yeah. How am I going to get better at the game? Yeah. Um, but the finals is like fight, 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 fight. You get uh, a lot of practice, and so you get a lot of practice That's in, awesome. and it's just get, get get back to it, get back to it. So I might so, have to look into that. Yeah, it's pretty fun. That sounds good. Cool. So that's, uh, that's uh, the opening round of drinks. Let's get into the main topic today, which is Tales from the Tavern. Tales what the tavern. are some of the goofy, silly, funny things that just happen around the game yeah. store? Like I said, today is going to be a much more chill episode. We're just shooting the... Shooting the breeze. Shooting the breeze. Yeah. Um, all right, you, you have a story you want to yeah. tell what... Well, so we did a, a pretty funny thing today. Um, there's this animation that we were trying to kind of do like a, a live action recreation of. It's from Worthy Kids. Worthy Kids, yeah. Um, we were trying to do a, a similar live action thing to promote our tavern and, and promote our mead specifically. Um, and it the animation was incredible. It's it Think of like an old 90s, uh, Eight. like 80s serial commercial, um, but like with old... Uh, Animation, it's like, like, like Don like, Bluth like, animation, yeah. like like Space Ace or yeah. like uh, the Dragon's Lair. Yeah, I was thinking of uh, like um, like Black Black Cauldron. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So old animation, but really, really funny, succinct, hilarious. It's it's so funny. Yeah. Uh, Wizard's Ale is something like that. It's called. Yeah. Um, but we were gonna do something like that. Andrew comes in the tavern. He's this little boy. Um, and I'm I'm this this wizardly figure, um, and uh, long story short, Andrew ends up covered in honey water um, on his <laughs> on his knees. <laughs> I, I'm on my knees, and ever it's water boarding water boarding you, and yeah. it's not just normal water. No, he decided to stick honey in it for authenticity. So at, well, so now I'm all sticky and wet. At the beginning of it, I didn't know I'd be pouring the drink directly on you. I put the honey in it to kind of give it an off tan color to represent me. So if there was a shot of me pouring it, it doesn't look like just straight Authentic. water. I didn't know at the time I'd be just pouring it directly into his face. V video projects, as you do it, they evolve. And so we're like, oh, it would yeah, be funny if you spill some on me. And then very it, off it, it the evolved cuff. to like... Nah, just like pour it down your throat and yeah. choke on it. It's on our TikTok. You can watch it. Please it's don't. a little unsettling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's kind of weird. Anyway, so but that was fun. So we yeah. film a lot of stupid, silly videos. Yeah. 
Um, I had a blast with the Seto Kaiba one that we did where I blasted through the wall. How many times did you have to do that? I had to blast through the wall twice. Okay. The first time I did it, Nixie only recorded the first two seconds <laughs> of it, and then she stopped. Yeah. Um, and you miss the scene where like I fall and I completely trip on the floor, yeah. and then I get up, and then I say my lines. So maybe That would have been perfect. Maybe it was a good thing that she <laughs> didn't catch that. You only get me stumbling through the door. Um, the second take we did, though, of me blasting through the wall came out perfect. Yeah. So Now, Seto you want to do fun. more videos of as Oh, Seto Kaiba is such a fun character. And we were, we were watching just... Seto Kaiba scenes. I, we've been watching videos. He of him all is day. so extra. He's, he's way over the top. He's like the definition of over my, the top. My favorite scene that you showed me um, was a, from a Yu Gi Oh movie. Seto Kaiba is coming up to where, where Yu Gi is to duel him, and he jumps out of his he's, private he's jet. He's flying a private jet. Yeah. He jumps out before it lands. <laughs> like the, the jet no is flying. No parachute, no he nothing. Just, you know, 20 feet above the ground, just hops out yeah. and then remote parks his jet behind <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like He couldn't even wait for it no. to land. Yeah. He, he is very much extra. I, I love channeling his energy, though, of like, you're a third rate duelist with a fourth, fourth rate, rate deck. deck. You know, yeah. like he's, he, he just talks crap yeah. on anyone. Screw the rules because I have money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. he's, he's, he's fun. Um, but filming the videos is because we, we we try to do a video a day, yeah. if not two. Um, I will say there's been so many times I've been filming a video and I've been very conscious, almost embarrassed because I'm making an absolute fool of myself. Yeah. And there's people in the store. For example, the, where I blasted through the wall as Seto Kaiba mm -hmm. and made such a loud noise that a customer from the other room ran in and was like, is everyone okay? <laughs> and I'm like standing there like looking like a total butt in costume. Like, <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm just filming TikToks, man. Yeah. <laughs> like, so uh, filming, to, it's great to Do have a Do you get space. used to it? Because no. you have, okay. No, you, like you're just today, always going to be embarrassed. Today yeah. I was extra today was embarrassed. extra. Today for I sure. was super embarrassed. We did the the Count Dooku where I was Count Dooku's top half, and I was like twirling the <laughs> yeah, lightsabers. Dude. I was sitting on your shoulders. I really enjoyed that one, actually. A lot of people have. Yeah. Um. So, uh. But yeah, that one. That one was like I, I get embarrassed every time. I feel are... like you were less embarrassed and just more scared. Uh, well, on yeah, that I was one sitting from... on your shoulders. So. Yeah. I, I, I felt I was going to fall I'm six off. foot one, just so everybody knows. So sitting on my shoulders, you are, you know, off I'm the a, ground. I'm, I'm a little high. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> um, it's funny, though, because uh, a lot of the people I work with, yeah. as in, like, my contacts, some of them watch my videos. Yeah. So our distributor, the guy who sends us our Magic the Gathering product, our mm -hmm. Yu-Gi-Oh product, he called me the other day, and I pick it up. I'm like, oh, uh, yo, Adam. He's from Southern Hobby. Yo, right. Adam. And he's like, yo, what up, Seto Kaiba? And I'm like, gosh <laughs> dang it. I walk into Big O Tires, and somebody- Big O, really? Yeah, I'm, I'm just getting an oil change. Yeah. And somebody was like, oh, dude, it's you, the guy who works at the game store. I'm like, that's weird, man. Yeah. <laughs> that's, yo, I mean, get I'm used just getting to an oil it. change. Yeah. You, that, I mean, that's that's the- nature of being um on social media and i guess have a following boy yeah so so that's some of the what whatever what else, what else <laughs> has happened in the store well so um i recently had my D, &D game with uh christopher, christopher paulini. paulini and everything um uh, which was i don't such know a why dream. i said it that way i'm yeah, sorry i was not mocking <laughs> i was not mocking <laughs> you i just wanted to harmonize no, with um, you <laughs> yeah uh by the way such a cool guy. No, he was yeah. super cool. Um, chill, down to earth, like exactly how you would, I guess, want like someone who you view as like a celebrity, a, cool guy. a hero figure. He was a cool guy. Like, he was a cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but the game, uh, well, so I'll, I'll, I'll say the bad and then I'll say the good. Um, the bad was the room that was that it was in. Yeah. Like you were saying on last week's uh, podcast, uh, it happened in a place called The Reserve, which is um, a private event space in the mall that can be rented out. It's Not sound echo, treated at it's all. It's an echo chamber. It's an echo Super chamber. Super loud. And you get 
Uh, you get six or seven tables of a bunch of nerds playing D and D, and it was incredibly loud. So, so it was hard to talk and like be in the be in mm-hmm. the zone, be immersed. Yeah, when you feel like you're in a uh, high school cafeteria. Yeah. the immersion was not uh, really a part of this particular game, just because of the environment wasn't uh, cohesive yeah, uh, yeah, for yeah. that. Um, that was really the only downside. Um, the other players were, were pretty fun. Uh, Christopher Paolini, as far as I can tell, has not played much TTRPGs um, or Dungeons & Dragons. Wow. He didn't know the name of the dice. He didn't know how the mechanics worked. But what he excelled at was the role-playing. Yeah. Of course, because he's, he's a, a storyteller. Right. Yeah, he's a storyteller. He played this barbarian named Thrud, and he played the most like classic... Dumb, strong barbarian, and it was great. He, That's so most cool. of his, uh, and he looked like he was having a genuinely good time with it. I hope so. Um, most times his character would be like, Thrud happy, Thrud climb tree, Thrud attack. Um, <laughs> and, and he was having a good time with it. But he, my favorite moment of his, we're at the end of the, cam- the campaign, we're fighting the big bad, um, and he's like, I'm gonna offer. Uh, a prayer to get divine inspiration for this attack. Um, and his prayer was to just, um, from the most guttural part of his being, scream, Leroy Jenkins. <laughs> um, and so he screams so Leroy Jenkins. So he's a big Jenkins. nerd. Yeah, he's a big nerd. Oh, and then he, that's awesome. he goes and describes how his barbarian rips off his shirt. By the way, he described his barbarian has a satchel that he keeps with him that just has um, shirts so that he can <laughs> perpetually rip off his shirt before he uh, does an action. That's awesome. Um, and so he describes his glistening pectorals as he's screaming Leroy Jenkins, and then the DM rolls with it. He's like, okay, as you grab your blade, it glows with divine energy and abdominal muscles grow on the blade oh my as as you're making this attack. So I, I just love that he was getting into it yeah. as much as he was. I mean, um, you know, I bet there's definitely some celebrities who would be like, all right, I agreed to do this, let's do it. Yeah. And then they would just do the bare minimum. The bare and minimum, you, And you yeah. could tell that yeah. they weren't really into it. But it sounds like he had a good time. So he, so he would describe time. these, you know, fantastical things that are happening, and then he'd turn to us and be like, okay, now which dice do I roll? <laughs> <laughs> How so, do I know my attack? But hey, being able to play D&D with Christopher Paolini, like, oh, what yeah. a dream, Like right? I said, what a dream. He's literally been my favorite author for, for literally forever. I reread The Inheritance Cycle once a year. Um, so to get that moment and to... To have that as just a yeah, I got this kind of bragging rights over yeah, any other fans over like any that. Other nerd. Um, it's pretty freaking there's, awesome. There's some fantasy authors who it would be like amazing to play, like like yeah. like J.R.R. Tolkien. You yeah. Know, what if we? What if you were, got a chance to play with him back? Then? Yeah. Like so, you got to do that, which not many people get to do. No. So that's no, and and that's not cool. many people will get to do unless your personal friends. With him, and he starts playing D anD D or yeah. something. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. Um, speaking of games, we played some pretty fun games here in the tavern. Mm-hmm. The airship raid, yeah, is probably one of our best D anD D encounters. Oh, before I, I'm gonna say the best one that we offer as a game in the store. Absolutely. Be- before I get to the airship, though. It was really cool. Christopher Paolini, that adventure you guys played? Yeah. That was my adventure. You wrote it. I That's wrote right. that I adventure. I forgot about that. So you got to play. Yeah. Christopher Paolini got to play my adventure. So the adventure, Save the Cat. Save the Cat, which is a writing joke for all of you writers there. <laughs> if you are an author and you don't know what Save the Cat references, get on that. So, so a cool, what, what, a baked in inside What joke. does it reference? I have it, no idea. It's, it, it references that your main character should do something good so the audience likes him. Think of Aladdin wow. from Aladdin. He goes and steals some bread, and what does he do? He gives it to some kids yeah. who are hungry and some starving on the kids. street. Yeah. That's a save the cat mm-hmm. moment. So your hero needs to do a save the cat moment um, to win the audience over and be like, oh, yeah, that's a good yeah. guy. Uh, I kind of want to talk a little bit more about that, or do you not want me to spoil the story? Let's for... not spoil okay. it. Save okay. the Cat is a good adventure because it I'm is gonna, actually a really fun adventure I'm with some twists. I'm going to publish it. Yeah. For free. 
for free. I'll publish it for free on our website. So free anyone, Shabakadoo. anyone can download the adventure that Christopher Paolini has played himself. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Okay, so the airship, airship though. Yeah. Also an adventure written by me. Boy, I'm just you're I'm just kind of cool. The coolest. <laughs> right? I'm so full of myself. <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so I wrote. Uh, so I 3D printed this ginormous airship. And it's like I, three feet long. It's huge. It's huge. This was We Geek Together before We Geek Together was yep. what it is. I was, you were taking it to game stores. And like offering yourself as a dungeon master, yeah, as a service I, that the game I was store like, could do. Hey, I could play D anD D at your store. I'll bring my airship, and then people can pay me. Yeah, and I got I got some games. I got paid a few hundred bucks to do that, which yeah. was really cool. Um, but it's a four hour adventure, mm-hmm. and uh, it's it's a blast. It's an absolute yeah. blast. Just such a fun game of D anD D. But the coolest thing is somebody used that game. To propose to that's right. To, uh, I had totally for, I haven't thought about that in ages. Yeah, somebody yeah. proposed with a game of D and D in our tavern. Yeah, with the airship. With the airship, the coolest piece of terrain that we own. So uh, you know, if you're falling in love, and if I remember <laughs> right, she proposed to him. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing great. Yeah. That's so, so cool. So, the, you know, if you're a nerdy couple and you like to play D and D, I got your hookup. Yeah, I can I can give you one of the most coolest games of D. The airship. Uh, I mean, I mean, you can. Yeah, uh-huh. uh, the airship had a bit of a scare though uh, with your boy. Oh man! So <laughs> I bring my kids into the store all the time. Um, my I have a two year old and he's an absolute gremlin. He just gets into everything. It's okay though because he he's, is so darn he's cute, adorable. <laughs> but yeah, so you know it's sitting on a shelf and he goes over. He's like, oh wow, and grabs <laughs> it and just pulls the whole thing on top of himself. Yeah, and of course it scares him. Luckily, since it's three D printed and it's not like even resin, it's FTM. Yeah, it's pretty light, so it didn't hurt him at all. Oh yeah, it he's broke fine. one of the decks for sure, and I still yeah. gotta fix. It, but uh, I think we need to make an airship 2.0. Oh, we, we're getting better printers that can print at higher fidelity. Yeah. I think we need to we build could, it again. But that took me so long. I know. Well, so Nate's the getting the Giga printer. Um, I know from Bamboo that can that has a we print have bed a printing farm like with four six, feet by six feet. We have a printing farm. That has oh, that's 60 true. printers. You could have if, it printed in a day. We could print the airship in a day yeah. if we wanted to, which is that's crazy. Insane. Yeah. It took me three months to build. Three months to of print. three printers running back to back to yeah, back. Yeah, it the took whole me time. three three months to build that airship. Now with uh, our business partner, 3D Cloud Print. Yeah. We could print that airship in a day, just like that. Yeah. Um, and it building it would take some work. Uh, but. yeah, build, but like I could have that airship together in one piece yeah. in a day, probably. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to do that, man. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do that. So let's talk about something else, but the airship's cool. If you're ever in our game store and you want to yeah. play, even, even if you're like from out of town and you're like, oh, we need to go visit yeah. the, the geek together. Is that one 20 bucks a person or is it the flat it's, rate? It's a flat rate of 200. Okay. Flat but, rate 200. You know, you split that up among a group of six. Yeah. It's like 20 bucks a person or something. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's math for sure. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a 35, I think, is what it comes to. But yeah. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so we run Epic Games of D&D. Of course, uh, we also play other games. I'll tell you probably the most cringiest thing I've been a part of in the store was live action D&D. That one yeah. hurts my soul. It, the, the setup for that, while was great in theory, oh, it just man. turned into the most... Oh, it felt Ghetto. so bad. It felt yeah. so bad. I, I still like wake up in the middle of the night in cold sweats because of this one. Dude, so, the, the spiders that we used. Everything, <laughs> everything, man. It was so bad. Yeah. So we did we did D D. Yep. Um we gave you a character sheet, and you had abilities on your character sheet that if you did it physically, you would get that ability. So for example, the rogue, if you did the Skyrim crouch. So if you crouched down, yep. your character would be invisible. 
and no enemies could target you if you did the Skyrim yeah. crouch. But the second you stood up, you could know you were completely visible. So people were squatting the entire hour <laughs> we were playing just so they could be invisible Again, the good entire in time. theory. <laughs> okay? <laughs> if you were the fighter, if you banged your sword and shield together and then yelled a war chant, you got to attack twice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so we we had all these fun things, okay? And Mechanics, then the idea yeah. was I would be the dungeon master who would then role play all the other NPCs. Right. And so then you would you would walk into a tavern, you would question all the different NPCs, and then you would find out who the bad guy is. The bad guy would reveal themselves and then you would fight the bad guy and the bad guy would summon spiders and you'd have to you would actually have to hit physically hit the spiders. Yeah. And when and there was no rolls for that. And then if you wanted to damage the the bad guy, you actually rolled a giant D twenty. So these spiders, did they come from the dollar store? <laughs> <laughs> no. They were five dollars on Amazon. Okay. They were Halloween decorations. Yeah, they they had these like wire, these wire, wire legs, legs that they, that they you were could just bend. covered in fur. Um, but they jiggled. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> they were wiggled. wires, um, and so you'd sit on the ground and just wobble around <laughs> yeah. because it was on wires. Or or you'd hit it and it would just start like bouncing. <laughs> <in>. <laughs> so they were very silly. Yeah. Um, and I had my friend Chester playing the villain. Did and he come? I, I didn't yeah, know he was, he was there the for villain. That. So That's cool. He, so when the villain was revealed, he would walk out of the back, and he would have a cloak, and he'd have a weapon. Yeah. And then, and then, each character was only allowed to take five steps, and then they would attack. So we, then, we had a big uh, taped off sh- uh, grid on the floor so that people could track. We didn't how have far a grid. Th- you it didn't was just have a free grid. step. Oh, it was just okay. Hey, you're Never only mind. allowed to take five steps. Yeah. So take five steps, and then walk up and hit him. Um, and uh, I thought they were. I great. hated acting <laughs> as all the four NPCs. <laughs> but like, were I you felt, running to different yeah, parts yeah, of yeah. the room? They're to like, be the we want to talk to the barkeeper, so you'd and so run I'd over there. run over and put on <laughs> like a cloak, and I'd be like, "Oh, howdy, traveler! My name oh, is Stefan. I'm the barkeeper." <laughs> and they're like, "Now we want to go talk to the gnome." And then I'd run over, and then I'd squat <laughs> down and hat. put on a riddle, <laughs> little red hat, and I'd be like, "Oh." Hello, traveler. <laughs> How can I help you? And so, like, <laughs> it was so bad just because, like, think of it from a customer point of view. Right. You paid because we charged. <laughs> I hope you didn't charge more than, like, $15. It was like, it was like 15 bucks. Okay, good. So we charged oh, money with the bread. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst part of it. I know. <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we're, we're trying. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so imagine you're a customer. <laughs> <laughs> and you just spent fifteen dollars on this experience, right? That you watched a video for. You're like, wow, <laughs> live action D and D. That sounds actually kind of cool. It's cool in that theory. sounds like a cool idea. You walk into a room. There's one guy <laughs> in the room, <laughs> and he explains the rules. And he's like, all right, go talk to the NPCs. And then you walk over to nothing. It, there's yeah. just a sign that says barkeep, and you're like, yeah. oh, I want to talk to the barkeep. And the one guy just runs over, <laughs> <laughs> puts on a wig, and then does a different voice. It's like yeah. that freaking scene from Avatar, Avatar. That's where what you've I was got just the guy with the three of. different hats, like Shu and Doc and yeah. the store. It was literally like that. Yeah. And, oh, my goodness, yeah. I felt so bad. I almost wanted to give everybody a refund because I'm like – I mean, like, it seemed like yeah. everybody was having fun, and they were laughing, and they were good spirits about it, but, yeah. like, I, w- I, w- I would have walked away from that and been like, we're never doing that again. Like, yeah. that, was, that was weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, that that was weird. Am I right? <laughs> so, <Yeah. clears throat> I'm sorry mm-hmm. for the the 12 to 15 people we yeah. accidentally duped in on that event. <laughs> It was a good idea on paper. I, I don't quite remember what time of year that oh, was happening, man. but really, I'm sure it came down to 
there's other projects we're working on, so we didn't have time to flesh out how that event would work. Well, and it wouldn't have and worked. We had, but we had already advertised for it. We, so we, we had already done it, so event. it was committed. And yeah. it wouldn't, we wouldn't, like, we barely made any money on it. But if I paid for five different actors to be all the different NPCs in there, we would have we would have lost a ton of yeah. money. It would have been really expensive. So I'm like, oh, you know, the dungeon master usually plays all the NPCs, so we'll just have that'll me. be fine. That, That's that, always that how D and D works. <laughs> but it was so oh, creepy. Boy. Man. <laughs> like, I feel so bad. Uh-huh. So that was my most cringiest moment uh, for the store. Yeah, oh. my worst moment, and and. I don't really blame myself for this. Um, That's but it good. Was <laughs> <laughs> Who do you blame? <laughs> uh, it, well, it was the first time that we really had like real theft in the store. Uh, um, when all the, yeah, the Warhammer bad. decks and everything got stolen. Um, because from the positions of the cameras, I was like behind the counter it, it for 10 seconds like, Yeah, it only something. took them like... And really what was happening, I was just ringing away. up someone in the back. Yeah. So there's not really anything I could have done. But boy, is there not a day that goes by in this tavern where I, whenever I'm really behind the counter now, people are in the store. My head is on a swivel. Oh, yeah, we're always yeah. checking people. Yeah, it, and not to say um, that people who wear masks are people who, like, steal no but it just turned out that the two people who were stealing from us have masks we're wearing masks uh just Um, the normal you know covid uh restriction kind of mask that kind of stuff and so it's like it it, it's a way that bad people can um exploit exploit the situation not that not that we're gonna get political (laughs) and the last thing i want to say is no 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 i'm not saying anything like that. i was just your bad moment versus my bad moment Mm. Stuff actually hurt the store that day. Yeah, that that but, wasn't fun. Um, I just happened to it, be the one there. It was just my pride that was hurt for the <laughs> right. For the, oh man, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah. I don't know. Do you have any other stories? Um, <clears throat> stores changed a lot. The store has changed so much. Uh, you were telling me today. We, because we have some neighbors who are opening a store next yeah. to us, and mm-hmm. they have been in construction since November, yeah, maybe even October. They they've been working on it for a while, and, and they've done now, a ton from what we. Can I mean, see. Yeah, yeah, they're changing it a lot, but it's now almost February, and their store still is not open. So no. they've been working on it yeah. for three months, which is like three months of paying rent, and it's not making and, you a and penny. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, and that remind I was I was telling him. It reminded me of when we opened from the day we got the keys to the store. October 31st. To the day we opened, November 19th, 19 days. We opened a store in yeah. 19 days. Yeah. And you were still working full time at Jimmy John's. At, at Jimmy John's. So it was really you, me, our mom, and then Dom's, Dom's dad. father, who's a contractor. Yeah. Um, and we were just there for 10 to 12 hours a day. Just yep. building and, and I would come after work. I told my wife, I'm like, yep. you're not going to see me yep. for the next 18 days because I'm going to go to work straight there, and then I'm going to work, and then I'm going to come home and sleep. How glad are you that those days are over? <laughs> oh, man. Like, Jimmy John's was great. Yeah. It did so much for me. It's so nice now, though. During that first, like, f- five, six months where yeah. it was Jimmy John's and this job, was brutal. Yeah. So I'm glad. I I am in, amazed by what you were able to still get done in those days because you were still writing an adventure every week. Yeah. You were still our accountant for the business, mm-hmm. keeping track of all the money and everything. Yeah. You were still the marketing guy doing all the was, TikToks and everything it. like that. Yeah. But and then you also full time managed a restaurant. I'm glad. That's insane. I'm glad uh, I don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> yeah, we all are. But 18 days is crazy to think about that we yeah. could open a store in 18 days. Yeah. Wow, 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 wow. Thank goodness I went full time when I did too. Otherwise, that would probably not have happened. No, we couldn't have done it without yeah. you. Um, what's also really cool is there have been two other game stores that opened up pretty close to our time in Utah. Both of them are Level one up gamers. north. Level one yeah. gamers, and then I'm I'm blanking on the Who else? name, but it's a guy I follow on TikTok, 
and he started as an online dice seller. Oh, okay. So he sold dice online. Yeah. Made enough money and opened up their own game store. And it Way looks, cool. And it looks good. Yeah. It's like a good looking store. So is Level One Gamers. And so it was really cool. Uh, and I really want to merge forces. Not merge forces. I, I want to work with them. I want to yeah, collaborate absolutely. with them. Absolutely. Because uh, I, I want to get Collaboration with other get cool them people in the industry? Guests. Yeah. So they can talk about what it's like their to, experiences to run their, their own stores. Their, mm-hmm. But yeah it's, yeah, it's 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 really cool. Dead Wars was a highlight. That Dead was Wars was crazy. We've had I, some cool people here in the store, too. Like, Brandon Sanderson came into the store. Brandon Sanderson. I So I was the only one working that night. And this guy comes in. And I didn't know who he was at first. Um, because I guy. haven't read his books before. I'm going to because my girlfriend will probably kill me if I don't yeah. eventually. She is a huge Brandon Sanderson. They were the person fan. who picked out Brandon Sanderson, Ex- right? Yep. And this was before I had started dating her, but her group was playing in the tavern. And this guy's just walking around. And so this person, you know, gets up from their table and goes up to this person who's standing near the bar. It's like, Brandon Sanderson, I'm such a huge fan. And they have their interaction. From that moment on, I'm like, oh. You're Brandon Sanderson. I've heard of you. Um, so that was really cool. But then he pr- he goes on to buy like $200 worth of our mead and mugs. The mead. Um, which was just like super cool. I was like, yeah. He just – that was probably the biggest sale of mead we had up until that point mm-hmm. was, was that sale. Um, we've had some pretty fun activities in the store. I really liked Gingerbread Dungeon. Oh, uh, I love Gingerbread I Dungeon. I really like Gingerbread Dungeon. That yeah. was a great event. We made dungeons out of graham crackers and frosting. Yeah. And then populated it with little candy monsters. Yeah. And the creativity that we got to see from the groups that came in was so cool. It was creativity, but also the amount of kids we saw yeah. at the event. Yeah. Because game stores, I mean, like, usually don't bring your... Uh, no. five to ten year old kids in a game store just because it, it requires some level of maturity. Yeah. And like a five year old to an eight year old, that's kind of hard to, yeah. to require that maturity. But this was a great family event for that. It was a that. super good family event. Yeah. Um, We're other, definitely going to do that next year. Yeah. For sure. What are some other cool events? Just fun events. I really have loved the LARPs in the Tavern that we that we did. LARPs in the Tavern The, the great. first like three LARPs in the Tavern uh, just like felt like kind of peak uh, geek. geek together event stuff. Yeah, we we had NPCs, we had quests, we live had bands, live music. Spencer, specialty you were working food. for us before. Yeah, you before were our bard before. You were our it was, bard. Uh, yeah, so Spencer killed it. Thank you, yeah. man. <laughs> he played through the fire and the flames. That's right. Uh-huh. Yeah, dude. On a gu- on a gu- acoustic guitar. Yeah, that was, was really cool. Fun in a mandolin. Yeah, it it makes me so excited to be doing another one finally. Yeah, next we're doing another LARP, yeah. but this episode will come out by the time the LARP's happening. So yeah. we'll talk about that next episode. Heck yeah. Um, I've uh, really liked. Uh, actually, I'll tell you what I haven't liked. As much as I really want to like them, as much as I've been trying to like them, because it's my idea, but I don't think it's a good idea anymore. The Competitive D and D tournaments, yeah. Competitive D and D. I've had this idea to have competitive D and D, like D and D that you can play against other groups, and you can prove your group is the most noblest, most mighty warriors. Yeah. And again, on paper, that sounds pretty cool. And I think we only had one event. That we had a really good turnout for. Was that the first the one? The very first yeah. one. Um, after that, they have been an absolute wash. And it's an absolute grind for me to, like, get it done. It's a lot of prep work. Because it's a ton of prep from work. From the stories, and balancing from the minis, and all maps, this stuff. Like, getting the coordination with all the dungeon <sighs> masters. Yeah, it's a ton of work. Yeah. And then... N- not to have one up. group show up, yeah, is... maybe one or two, yeah, and then uh, we're still having problems of imperfection where it's like, if I play with this dungeon master, I'm more likely to win versus if I play with this yeah. dungeon master. I'm the, not. the balancing so, was was hard. Um, um yeah. I I think because we're doing a competitive D and D this Saturday in three days, yeah, and I think after this Saturday, I'm gonna really set it on the shelf. 
until, until I feel we have inspired. some better ideas until to, I feel inspired. to make it better. Yeah. yeah. As much as I like the idea on paper. I do know that because I got to participate a few times, um, twice, I think. And, and what I know from the other groups that have participated, it was well received. Um, players have fun. Players have fun, which is a big part of it. That's good. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> it's not good for me. So, so maybe maybe that's what it is. It's just yeah. my sourness is coming through. I don't know. Well, I think this I think, was a good tales in the tavern. Yeah, I definitely cried a bit <laughs> talking. So I, I laughed to the point of crying. Yeah. I, I had tears running down my this face. Was, you know, this was a fun Tales from the Tavern. Absolutely. No, we, should, we should do it again. Heck yeah. Um, let's do <clears throat> let's do a final call. Last call. Last call for drinks. Mm-hmm. You can find us on social medias like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Under We Geek Together. We post very regularly. As well as uh, our live streaming uh, companion is our, our live streaming arm to our media component yep. is going to be hitting stride here pretty darn soon if not already yep. so you'll be able to see a lot more of the day to day what's going on in the tavern cool events live streams check us out and, oh, and uh, if you have any ideas on how to make this better or any of our content oh, yeah. if you have ideas of what we should do please let us know give us a comment we read everyone and thank you for watching yes thank you <laughs>